Assalamu alaikum dear students. Today I will give you lesson number 2 of chapter number 1 science skills from grade 6 sciences. The topic which we are going to discuss is taking measurements. In everyday life and when carrying out scientific experiments, you use your senses to make observations. You can smell gases given off, see colors change, and hear fizzes and pops. However, you cannot use your senses for everything and you cannot trust them to give the correct answers. Fortunately, there are many occasions such as weighing yourself at home or doing experiments in class when you do not have to depend on your senses to make observations, you cannot use or can use measuring instruments instead. So option is there, but so depending upon measuring instruments, we cannot use our senses entirely. Why? Because the senses cannot give you the accurate results. So, the measuring instruments are used to find out the length, mass, volume and so many other quantities. In this topic, we will also discuss the unit of different quantities. In this topic, we will discuss different quantities and their units. These different quantities are length, volume, mass, temperature and time. Here are some measuring instruments which are used for the measuring of all these quantities and in the last we will discuss their units. First of all, length. Length of an object can be measured with a ruler or a tape measure. Units of length are kilometer, meter, centimeter, millimeter, and these units normally used to refer with their symbols like kilometer can be represented as km, meter, m, centimeter, cm. Next quantity is volume. What is volume? Volume is the space occupied by an object. Volume of a regular even shaped object such as a cube can be found by multiplying its length by its width or by its height. However, to find the volume of an irregular or shaped or rough object, you must use a measuring cylinder. So, so volume can be measured by using measuring cylinder. The units used to measure volume are cubic centimeter or milliliter, centiliter and liters. In science we use cubic centimeters as a unit of volume while the other are milliliters represented by ml, cl for centiliters and liters for l for liters. Third quantity is mass. What is mass? Mass is the amount of matter in something. The mass of something can be found by using weighing scales or a balance. So, these are the instruments used to measure mass. Units of mass are grams, kilograms and milligrams. Our next quantity is temperature. What is temperature? Temperature means how hot something is. The temperature of something can be found by using thermometer. So this instrument is used to measure temperature. What are the units of scale used to measure temperature? So here you can see three different types of scale of temperature. Number 1 Celsius scale represented by degree Celsius or degree centigrade. Kelvin scale represented by K and Fahrenheit scale represented by degree Fahrenheit. First of all, I will discuss degree Celsius that is Celsius scale. Degree Celsius sometimes called degree centigrade which are the units of temperature. 
On the Celsius scale, the numbers were chosen so that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. Next scale is Kelvin scale. The lowest possible temperature is called the absolute zero, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius. For some convenience or for some scientific work, it is convenient to use a temperature scale starting at absolute zero. This scale is called the Kelvin scale and has degrees which are the same size as those on the Celsius scale. Thus, 273 Kelvin equals 0 degrees Celsius and 373 Kelvin equals 100 degrees Celsius. Now the third scale is Fahrenheit scale. It has much smaller degrees than the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale. On this scale, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boiling point of water is 12, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Next quantity is time. Time can be measured by stopwatch or stop clock. And what are the units used for time? Seconds. Not only seconds, but time can also be measured by minutes or hours. After discussing all these quantities, measuring instruments and their units, we must also know that what are SI units. SI units abbreviates for System International Units and these units are specific for some quantities. So first of all what are SI units? The standard units used for measurements are called SI units. For example, the SI unit of length is meter, SI unit of mass is kilogram, and SI unit of time is second. In this activity, I will show you some measuring instruments. The first quantity is volume. Volume can be measured by an instrument called measuring cylinder. Here you can see a measuring cylinder. Another quantity is length. Length can be measured by two instruments, tape measure and ruler. Here you can see the tape measure and ruler. This is the balance which is used to measure mass. Temperature can be measured by a, an instrument called thermometer. This is a thermometer which is used for clinical purposes. It is used to check the fever of a person. Here is another type of thermometer which is used in science lab for different experimental purposes. Time can be measured by stopwatch and stop clock. Here you can see the stop clock and stop watch. In this activity, I'll show you some important instruments which are used for finding out different measurements of different quantities. This is based on your next topic, making difficult measurements given on page number 7. If you have the right instruments, measuring is usually pretty easy. However, sometimes things can be a little more difficult to measure and need thinking about. So first of all, now we are going to solve our first problem. How do you find the mass of a single rice grain? Now here are some rice grains. Rice grains are very light and it is very unlikely that you will have a balance which is here that can measure very small masses. An easy way is to weigh 100 rice grains and divide their mass by 100. We can easily calculate 
द मैस ऑफ वन राइस ग्रेन फर्स्ट यू प्लेस अ पीस ऑफ पेपर ऑन द बैलेंस देन वी विल पोर द हंड्रेड राइस ग्रेन्स ओवर इट now we will check the mass of these 100 rice grains in the balance which is mentioned or shown here so it is 8 8 means it is 8 g 8 g doesn't indicate that the mass of one rice grain so we have to calculate the mass of one rice grain by dividing 8 by 100 now we will calculate the mass of one gr grain rice first of all we will write mass of 100 rice grain what is the mass of 100 rice grain it is 8 g which we have seen in balance now for finding mass of one rice grain we will divide 8 by 100 so we can able to calculate it out and find the result in gram and our answer is 0.08 grams which indicates that it is the mass of one rice grain if the rice grains are not exactly the same then 0.08 gram is the average mass of one rice grain you can do your calculation from the book page number 7 in this activity we will find out the volume of an irregular shaped object For this purpose we need a measuring cylinder beaker having a small amount of water and an object irregular shaped that is stone First of all we will pour small amount of water in the measuring flask very carefully now we will observe that what is the volume of water in the measuring flask it is 50 cubic centimeter now carefully lower the stone that is this object inside the measuring cylinder very carefully until it is submerged in water now measure the volume once again you have to find out the difference between the two readings is the volume of the object here you can see the volume rises up to 55 cubic centimeter or milliliter so now we are going to calculate this on the board now we will find out the solution of problem number 2 so you have to calculate it out by writing first value volume of water because you have taken first water in measuring cylinder and you have noted that volume up to 50 milliliter now again you have to write down the volume of water along with object and what we have taken as object stone that irregular shaped object was stone so you have to uh, add that volume uh, in 50 so it will become 55 ml because we have observed this also in the measuring flask now only you have to calculate 
in the end volume of stone that is stone object what are you going to do in this you have to subtract 50 from 55 so write down here 55 minus 50 and you will get your answer 5 milliliter which indicate that this is the volume of stone in this setup you can see a simple pendulum hanging by a thread no matter how far a pendulum swings the time for one swing is always the same however one swing may be too fast to the time accurately but you can get a good answer by timing 10 swings and divide, dividing the result by 10. Now we will calculate the timing of swings in seconds by using this stopwatch. I'll on this stopwatch when I'll release the metallic thing and count number of swings 10 times. Now I'll start the experiment. I will release this metal, take it to the highest position and then release. Make sure that you have to count the number of swings 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, as you can see, The time which is given here is 7 seconds. Now we will do the calculation for finding out the time for one swing of pendulum. First of all, we will write time for 10 swings. Which is 7 seconds. Now, for finding out time for 1 swing, we will do dividing or divide 7 by 10 so our result will be 0 0.7 I am writing over here so you can able to see 0 0.7 second this is the time for one swing